Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial video on the HasMotion YouTube channel. For this tutorial, we will be overviewing the application of force platforms in Visual 3D. As you may know, force platforms are devices used to measure the forces exerted by a subject standing, walking, or performing movements on its surface. It records force vectors in three dimensions, vertical, horizontal, and lateral, along with moments and, cent and the center of pressure. For this reason, force platforms provide critical data for biomechanical analysis because they measure the interaction between the participant and the environment. Overall, reaction force data measured by force platforms gives physical meaning to parameters such as calculated joint forces, moments, and powers. A quick note is that the analog signals that are collected from the force platform are not the force signals. The force signals must be computed from these analog signals using several parameters that specify the type of computations required. Different force platforms require different computations, which makes this a non-trivial task. First, we will begin by reviewing the information stored in a C3D file, which is a flexible binary file containing data from a single trial. Data from force platforms are stored in C3D files in a very specific way. The following parameters should exist in the C3D file. FP used is the number of force platforms used. FP type is the type of force, platforms used, force platform used which determines how to interpret the recorded analog signals as this would be different for each type of force platform. FP zero is the range of frames for which a background noise level is calculated and then subtracted from each of the analog, signal, analog channels. FP channels is the names of the analog channels, so for example, the forces in X, Y, and Z, and the moments in X, Y, and Z. FP origin is the origin of the force platform in the force platform coordinate system. And FP corners is the X, Y, Z coordinates of the force platform corners in the laboratory coordinate system. And we can note that there is a specific ordering of the four corners. FP underscore cal matrix is a calibration matrix for the force platform if required by the force platform's type. So uh, force platform data can be seen as a confusing aspect of the C3D file format. All of the force platform parameters required for the type of force platform being used must be defined correctly. Some of the parameter, parameters are specified by the force platform manufacturer. These values are provided in the manufacturer's user manual. Note that some of these parameters cannot be transferred directly in the C3D file. An important note is that the C3D format assumes consistency between units throughout the file. This means that if the motion capture has been collected in millimeters, then all distance measures should, in the file should, must be consistent with this. Furthermore, the corner locations and force platform origin values must be in millimeters and the moment channels of the force platform must be expressed in newton millimeters as well, if this were the case. The number of channels associated with the force platform and the information carried by each channel varies with the force platform manufacturer. This is usually represented as a force platform type in the C3D format. The specifics of each force platform type can be found on the associated page on the HasMotion software documentation wiki. In this tutorial specifically, we will focus on type 4 force platforms, which have 6 channels which are laid out as seen here. And these are specified by the analog channel numbers. Type 4, force, uh, type 4 platforms also have a 6x6 cal matrix that specifies how the original analog signal should be transformed. The four signals of our interest for our kinetic analysis are the force, center of pressure, and free moment signals. In the figure shown here, it depicts a Kistler force platform but the diagram force vector seen is consistent for all force platform manufacturers. <clears throat> Each platform type records different information in its different channels. However, it, the process of converting the original recorded analog signals into the desired force signals follows the same common steps. The first step is computing the baselines. The second step is subtracting the baselines from the original signals. The third step is to pre-multiply by the calibration matrix, if applicable. The fourth step is calculating the ground reaction force, or GRF. The next step is to apply a threshold and finally transform the data to the laboratory coordinate system. I will be going over these steps in more detail in the following. Next, we can move on to describing the steps of the computations. 
The first step is computing baselines. The FB0C3D parameter defines the range of frames used to calculate an average baseline value for each analog signal. An important note is that most of the manufacturers set the range to be the first 10 frames of the trial. This means that if the force platform is loaded during these first 10 frames, then the ground reaction force signals will be incorrect. <clears throat> if this is the case, then the user should either set the frames to 0, 0 so that no baseline is subtracted, or should adjust the values to specific frames in which the platform, force platform is unloaded. The next step is to subtract baselines. The baseline value for each analog, sig analog channel represents the value of that channel's signal, signal under no load. It is subtracted from that analog channel's original, original signal at every frame to produce a teared signal. This does not affect the original analog signals as seen in the data tree since this, proce this processing takes place when the force platform signals are computed. The process of subtracting the signals can be seen here. So the teared analog e is equal to the original analog minus the baseline. After that step, we want to move on to pre-multiplying by the calibration matrix. Several of the force platform types have a calibration matrix, which is an inverse sensitivity matrix that is provided by the manufacturer. Visual 3D pre-multiplies the values reported by the analog channels with this calibration matrix in order to convert the recorded analog signals from volts to the appropriate force and or moment signal units. For example, for a type 4 for force platform, the one we are focus on, focusing on today, the following would be the processing equation as seen here. So fx, fy, fz, mx, my, mz is equal to the cal uh, calibration matrix multiplied by the teared analog. The next step is to calculate the GRF or ground reaction force. This is represented by three vectors, force, center of pressure, and free moment. Each is calculated from the appropriate analog signals. Different force platforms type, platform types require different calculations for these ground reaction ve force vectors. For our type 4 force platform example, the force vector is equal to the intermediate force signals from the previous step, as seen here. The center of pressure is computed in this uh, series of equations here, and the free moment is computed as the following. The second last step is to apply the threshold. The visual 3D force menu contains an option to set a threshold for, for force platform slash structure data. Any computed signal value that is less than this threshold is assumed to be the noise and is set at zero. You may refer to the force platform, platform has motion wiki page for more details on this option and others. The final step is to transform data to the laboratory coordinate system. At this point, the signals have been computed in the force platform coordinate system and must be transformed into the lab coordinate system to give them meaning relative to the motion capture data. As long as the force platform is accurately located within the lab, for example using the CAL tester, this is, uh, this is accomplished by a straightforward translation from the force platform coordinate system to the lab coordinate. Now we will start on an example of creating the force platform parameters for a C3D file that contains the analog signals from the force platform but does not contain any parameters. First you will need to have downloaded the example C3D file off of the wiki tutorial page available here. Then we can go ahead and open up Visual 3D and as you can see I've I have already loaded in this file into my workspace. You can do this by clicking the open file button on the toolbar. Then we can move on to modifying the force platform parameters. We must select this option under the force menu on the upper taskbar. So we can navigate to the menu and then select Modify Force Platform Parameters from the drop-down. This will prompt this dialog box to appear here. Then we can select the Get Current C3D Parameters option on the upper right side of the dialog box. Once we select it, there should be no change to the dialog because there aren't any parameters in the file. Now in the same dialog, we can select Add an Additional, for an additional Force Platform twice. Then the edit boxes shown must be filled in with, val with the values shown in the image. The cal matrix and origin parameter va parameters are provided in the AMTI manual. Each force platform has different values. 
The channel numbers should correspond with the fourth platform signals. Visual 3D stores the analog signals alphabetically in the data tree, which is not necessarily consistent with the C3D file order. To see the C3D file order, you must look in the analog folder within the parameters. The force platform corners are the location of the corners of the force platform in the laboratory coordinate system. Next, we can learn to use the command pipeline to modify force platform parameters as opposed to doing it manually like before. So to do this, we can select the pipeline and then if we uh, enter the force folder, we can select the modify force platform parameters uh, command and then move it into our pipeline. Then if we select execute pipeline, then all the force, force platform parameters will be updated. When force platform data exists, Visual 3D attempts to assign the signal to a segment that comes into contact with it. If there is a low level of background noise in the signal, it will appear that something must be in contact with the force platform at all times. To ensure that only the sensible and real contacts are used, a threshold value is specified such, as, such that any ground reaction force signal below this value is assumed to be zero. This ensures clean contacts with the force platform. First, we can select the force menu and then click on Modify Minimum Force Platform Value here. This will open this dialog box to allow you to set a higher or lower threshold than the default. You may also opt to choose one of the other options for modifying force platforms. Now if we close this dialog box and then navigate here, navigate to the force uh, menu again, we can select Modify FP Center of Pressure dis Distance to Segment to specify and then this will open a dialog box to specify a minimum distance, which uh, the default is 0.2 meters. And this option allows you to verify that a particular signal has been caused by a segment. 